forgetting all the data set names it is just get get data set names so we have all these data set names yeah and yesterday we were dealing with some of them just to see and uh, just to explore the uh, things over there right so load any data set what we did just we loaded it with the load underscore of data set right so let's say that we want to load the brain network so we'll be saying the start like uh, df of brain is equals to sns dot load the data set of brain it works okay and then the some three four samples of this and there you get three rows over 63 columns okay so 63 columns are there same with any of the columns and all we have discussed yesterday okay and then we also did the figure styles and the figure x's yesterday all right and second someone is waiting so this is the link guys i have again shared it some of you were not getting the videos of last day so i've shared the link i have updated the videos in the drive you can get it there okay all right next thing so we have discussed the color platelets yesterday uh, what are the things okay how we can get the pad plots and the desaturations format and all the last graph we also did it okay so uh, let's go with the iris data set today uh, so can you just share the link again yeah will be do okay so df of iris will be sns dot so data set and would be iris that's it okay And it is having sepal length, sepal width. Okay, let's see the head first of all. That would be better. So we have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the species. All right. So this is just like one of the format where you'll be dealing with the machine learnings also. You'll be making programs over there, or you'll be going with the classification algorithm. Sorry, regression algorithm here. Okay. So we have four criteria. Uh, you can say it as features. We'll be discussing in the ML part. What is that? Okay. So SL, SW, PL, and PW, it's there, okay? So you can rename the columns, okay? Like that, giving in the, the curly braces of like sepal length to SL and whatever you want, okay? Next, so we have species. Let's see how many species we are having. We'll be looking at as df underscore of iris dot species dot unique or the set, whatever you want. You can go through, like right? Setosa, Vosicular, and Virginica. All right. Or you can make a list of all right so we have values in the petal length in the sepal width in the sepal length and the petal width right so what is the maximum value we are having in the sepal length or in the sepal width in the petal length and in the petal width let's explore those things okay so max of if i say just df dot sepal length do we get something oh sorry uh, this is Iris 7.9. Okay, same goes with the next of them. So we have values, the maximum values as it is, okay. Same will be for the minimum, I'm not going to make it there, okay. So if we have having the sepal length, having the values of uh, 7.9 and then the petal length is having a 6.9 values, okay. So let's see if I just make it as df of virus dot the petal length dot the values. 
So we have all these values but in an unsorted way because it's starting from 1.4 and it's coming there, right? So we need to sort this. So that is np.sort. And there you complete it starting from 1, ending at 6.9. Okay. So now we are going to go with the types of the data in the seaborn we are having. Okay. So in the types of the data we discussed, we have two kinds of data in the seaborn. The very first is say has to be univariate, there we deal with one of the columns and you can say with the uh, just one data, right? And then we have second as well as the bivariate. Okay, there you have more than one data. So in the univariate one, the very first plotting we will be discussing is called as this plot. Okay which is just used for plotting univariate distributions, okay? And the parameters you can use here is, so you can use the parameters like histogram, you can use KDE, okay? Content uh, density estimations, and you can make it as true or false, or the colors, basically all these, all right? So we'll be looking on those things, okay? And we'll be seeing what exactly is the KDE. Anyone knows what is KDE? Mm-hmm. All right, no problem. Fine. So let's say if we are just plotting something in the KDE, KDE is something like you will be having a just a kind of a, um, you can say it as, well, let's plot it, you will be seeing it exactly. Okay. So let's say if I'm plotting SNS dot a test plot. Okay, it's kind of a combination of an histogram and a line kind of a curve you can see on okay kind kind of a curve you can see it better all right so uh, let's plot the f of iris and now i'm plotting this petal length let's say all these values let's plot all these values okay so it would be petal length so this plot of petal length right so if i just run this what I see just a graph over there okay with some values why it's going within the middle of zero point something and it going with the six point something why does it because the values are just from one and ending at 6.9 if we zoom in there and if you see of the things so here we are having from one exactly and ending at something like 6.9 between seven and you can mark it at right so this is a histogram you can see in the back and then you are having a just a curve within the values okay Okay, uh, this time you can say des uh, density estimation cars. Okay, so all the observations, values, observations you are getting here, right? In the mathematics terms, you might be understanding KDE. All right, uh, so if we just modify all these, so there are various parameters if we want to modify this. We'll be making it as let's say here if I say the KDE equals to true. So what do you see? The same thing, right? When you write KDE is equals to false, so by default it is true. When you write KDE equals to false, you'll not get the KDE. Basically, you'll not see the graph or the curve. You'll only see the value. See, starting from 1.1 and ending it at 1.7. If you don't want to see the curve, you can write KDE is equals to false. Just a second, here's someone. Okay, done. All right, next. If you write KD equals true, it will be true or okay. Now, if I say KD is equals to true in this kind, and the type of graph, or if you say histogram, if I say KD equals to true, and the histogram is equals to false. You understand, right? The second one, you will be not getting any histogram. You only will be getting the KDEs. Okay. That's all you will be getting in your projects from uh, like going with the, um, what is that called as? Uh, EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. Okay. Then you will have to go with the KDEs and all. All right. So this is a blank one. Next. Now if I want to have both, and if I want to change the color of this blue, what I'll say is KD is equals true. Okay. 
by default always these are true but if, if still you want to write you don't have to write always the things you just write the colors so let's say I want a red color or green color kind of I'll just write green and it will be green okay now if I, I want to set something like uh, the excess so what, what I'll do is sns dot what we did yesterday if I just zoom in there mm, the 26 one sharing this tab what all we discussed yesterday is Hmm, this one, the graphs, set style and all these things, okay? So do like, set style, white grid, hmm, run again, yeah, nice. We have a white grid of the green colors, okay, well, we can make it like if you want pink, red, yellow, anything. You can make it like light colors are always best if when you are going with the KDEs the best one is the light colors when you're going through this okay all right next so this is like one of the thing when you are dealing with only one parameter see there I'm going with the petal length now values will be changing like if I, if I go with something else let's say um, some more values 7.9 sepal length okay see the values goes like this okay so in this case you are not getting any histogram because I have made it at false histogram is false or I think somewhat in the pink one has been changed okay alright no problem Here you can see the things, how is it made. Alright, moving next. Next goes with the bivariate data. So this was the univariate data we have discussed, okay? The bivariate data. Now, bivariate data means that you will be going through with two of the parameters or the features or like the columns you can say on. Basically the two datas, just like, right? So in the bivariate, the very first one is called as joint plot. Okay, so joint plot, what it does, it creates a multi-panel figure uh, based on the scatter, okay, uh, scatter, that means like um, regression, residual, hexagonal, KDEs and all those things, okay, kind of the plottings are there, we'll be going through one by one, you'll see it, okay, so this is joint plot, JT, uh, JPU, can say it as. What it does? creates a uh, multi let me zoom in fine okay let's see so first let's say if I write sns dot the joint plot so I'll have to write the two features let's say if I'm going with the petal length and I'm going with the y two sides will be there right here only one side is being plotted up. Oh, where is the one guy? Someone is coming. Yeah, done. So Y will be, let's say, petal width. Okay. Now you have to write from where you are going to take the data. So my data is DF. I hope we have DF of IDS. Okay. We have DF. DF of IS. Okay. And we'll just run this, let's see, for the very first case. We'll get a graph, that's it. Okay. 
So you get some dots over there that we called as a kind of a scatter, scatter plottings. Okay, scatter dot. The very first one is scatter. And the in the back side you are getting something as the histogram, the values. Like in this hand side and in this hand side. Petal length in this side and petal width in this side. Horizontal and verticals over there. Okay. Now the next thing. Let's go with the in more detail with this graph. Okay. So what if I say here that the kind of the graph we want is HEX. Run this. So now you will be having something different. See the inside cases will be totally different. Right. What you are getting here will be different. Now I'll also say the color, let's change the color. Hmm. So these are the yellow colors. Okay. Like this. And what if I say uh, we'll be dealing with the regressions and all. So let's uh, see how it looks like exactly a regression one. So let's copy this. So regression is nothing but REG and you're getting a line over there and that will be just a regression line. So if we say, uh, what's that called as? Just a second. KDE. Now uh, let's go with the KDE. That will be better. Here. Hmm. Nice. Okay, so uh, just a KD kind of thing. So you see the backside the KDs and all. Okay, let's plot it. Let's say if we go with the residuals and all. If it comes residual, the green, orange, green, white, green. Hmm. Alright. So these are the four kinds, one, two, three, and the four, scatter. Uh, sometimes you can make it as kind equals to scatter. Like this, okay, scatter plottings. And uh, what is that parameter, just a second. Mm. No, if we say having errors, yes. All right, make sure. Nice. Okay, so these are the parameters basically. The residual, the regression lines, the KDE, the hexagonals. Uh, regression I have deleted basically. So if I paste it, kind of a regression line if you want. And let's say the colors. Orange has been taken. Let's see the right form. So this is the line, regression line, where all the points come closer, like to the basically line, minimizing the errors and all. We'll be discussing it, right? The second in the bivariate is the uh, PL or you say it as pair plot so that is made as for like individual uh, columns with the individual row like if you're having a data set of 63 columns over the four rows so it will be like every row with all the 63 columns understood like if we are having such a column we have taken it like df of braid so if we take it like a pair plot, let's see what comes. Pair plot basically it means like every row with every columns. That is pairwise uh, bivariate distribution. Okay. So if I make a distribution of this uh, iris data set, I'll just say SNS dot pair plot of df of iris. That's it. So you only have to do this. And you run this. So the first of all, you will see a blank, not a blank kind of thing. You will be seeing a graph within blue colors or any, any. So blue is the C. So blue is the by default color. Okay. If you want to change it, 
so you don't go for writing colors and all okay you have to write the uh, kind again the palettes and the uh, you know like the diagonal kind so basically what you see all the scatter all the scattering plots all right one 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 and all why these four are having the diagonals what you can say the diagonals why this is a kind of a histogram because this is the diagonals are just the opposite one or not the opposite the same one we can say here. the petal width is with the petal width see on the x is x is petal width y is petal width so we are getting a histogram if the x is petal length and y is petal length we are getting a histogram you understood right so diagonals are the, when the x and y are the same right so if we want this to be changed what we'll say paste let's say if we want this right and if we say the diagonal kind is equals to kde okay and the kind of the total graph we want is the regression graph let's say all right that means a line again going through all these okay and this time if i say the palette is equals to vistia let's see what comes so in place of the uh, histograms you'll be again getting the curve let's wait for this yeah so you can see the curve again and the lines there okay but what are these uh, these sepal lens and what these features actually gives you the output so this says that at this point there is a species now what exactly which species are there what is all these species are basically mixed up right so we cannot distinguish whether which one is setosa which one is versicolor and which one is virginica virginica right so how to distinguish so we'll be having a parameter called as hue semantic in matplotlib we basically call it as the legend what we did yesterday the same will be here call it as like hue semantic and let's say if i write hue is equals to the species so basically on the basis of species we'll be distinguishing the uh, values or the graphs so now you'll be getting some three colors basically because we have three species so three colors will be there for the pair plot So let's have this. Sixteen graphs, and a beautiful graph will be coming. Yeah. So now on the right hand side, just you can see the species like Setosa, light, Versicola deep, and the Virginica total deep, right? So now we can easily identify which one is Setosa, which one is Versicola, and which one is Virginica. Clear to everyone? Having doubts? If you say, like, if you say R E S I D here, Diagonal kind in case of that. Here, in place of the uh, what is that regression line? The diagonal kinds, if you want, is something different. We're having blank basically because there is no residual effect which can be formed there. Okay, next. Now, you can save this by using sns dot uh, plot save or oh, sorry using plt plt.save and uh, you can write like in the png format svg format or if you want transparent image you can make transparent equals to true or false okay that can be made it as okay next thing all right guys so if you want this in a different format like not in the regression line in kind of a scatter plot what we got here right so you can make it like this also like if i say copy paste kind will be scatter 
and if I say plt dot save this figure as iris dot png and I say the transparent is equals to true you can save in the PDF format also that would be better like if you if you want to save it for your projects and all in that case you can make it so we will be having the image here somewhat here we'll be having something iris uh, I got it it's just a seconds ago we have made it there if we share this you'll be finding this image here okay the so image has been saved all right okay Oh, my screenshot. Untitled. Maybe shared. Okay, fine. Okay, so that's the thing. I can share. Oh, sorry, I can uh, just save the things. Okay. Now, what exactly is the scatter plotting? All these are the bivariate data. All these are having this bivariate thing. Let's say if I make some weights and height. Till now everything is clear to everyone having any doubts. Mm -hmm. Sir, I have some problem with KDE. Yes, see. KDE, sir, how it, it is getting plotted, sir? Sorry, what are you asking? Mm -hmm. Speak again, what are you asking? Sir, I was saying that how how the KD is getting plotted. Okay. See, what the work of a KD is just like it is a method for visualizing the distribution. What the distribution, the histogram is also doing. It is just a method for all the observation it is there. It will find the means of the all and it will be getting it plotted there. Okay, sir. Okay. Like when you have multiple plottings. Mm, so you can basically understand like let me zoom out here we go the KDEs like if we say on the basis of sepal length there we are getting basically a histogram so we can say this from this when you have a lot of values not within one data we'll be understanding see in this case now if I say virginica right so virginica values we can say it like it's starting from something maybe it is anything right and ending at 6 point something, 6.9, we can have this value from here, clear? Some values are ending at 7.9, something like this. In place of the histogram, you can just keep it. Like for a visualization, you can say it better looks like from a histogram. Okay. Understood. See the histograms if you look on. See the values can you identify here? Yeah, can you identify the things here? Which one will be going like six point and all? No, that will be like quite difficult, right? But in cases of the KDEs, it will be very easy. Like it's still here if you are having the KDE, it will be differentiated in three different parts. See, it looks like something like this. Clear doubts. Once you practice, you will be getting it through what exactly is being done. So let's have some weights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's take one more. Uh, Sixty. So two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. 
height and weight has been right now uh, you understand the scatter plottings are nothing but like in one place what you see here is just like kind of dots will be giving you the values okay like if i say sns dot scatter plot this also works in the bivariate form so you'll have to say the x let's say uh, for this time i'm using weight And on the y hand side, I'll be using my heights. And I'll say the color of the plotting should be like green. Okay. And markers I'm not making. Let's run this. So what do you see is all these values. So for something like X have the values on the Y and like that. Okay, so to make a categorical plotting with all these things, like if you see on the uh, DF of like if I go with the uh, iris one, iris data set, the same thing if I go with that. If we plot this, and let's say if we, if I'm plotting the species. On the x hand side and on the y hand side if i'm plotting the petal length with the scatter plot and data is iris so we get a something plotting like this okay scatter plot like this what is that in one line we are having setosa, in the second we are having versicolor, and in the third we are having versinica. So there comes the two different kind of a plotting. One is called a strip plot, and the second is called as the swarm plot. Okay, the two different plottings. Swarm plot is like with one categorical variable and with non-overlapping points. Here, what you see is the points has been overlapped. Yes, one before, one after the another. You can see it. In the strip plot with one categorical value with overlapping points understood like if i make it you'll be more clear if i make it the same thing okay and i use strip plot and the data i'm taking let's copy it paste it copy the total run this so uh, oh sorry this one strip plot. Mm -hmm. so what do you see the points are overlapped yes all the points you cannot see the points distinguishing right one by one and all the things have been just merged and like combined in one area so this is a strip plot where you have overlapping points now if we go with the swarm plot the same values will be there but some overlapping points, non-overlapping points right so you don't see any points overlapping or any of them so with one categorical value one true or false kind of thing okay like that and same if we go with the a box plot if we go with the box plotting basically on the ranges it works so let's increase the size of the plotting. I'll say it as fixed size to be. Ten by five, okay. And the box plot of the TF of IS. And the Orient, let's say it to be the horizontal. Horizontal and verticals basically. So, what is the error via unsupported operand for float and strings? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Where in the plotting of return AX?
count not one. This is only the sepal length. Sir, can I just check it with two only two columns, sir? And box plot works accordingly. Like you have to give the total data set, and all the columns values will be just plotted up. That is how it works. Mm. I'm giving the total data set that's not working here. Just a second. Fail to load this. Fail to load. You may be offline with limited connectivity. Try downloading. Limited connectivity. No. The rest from in PDF. We can copy with him. Let's open, let's open quickly. Accept, accept. Connect to drive. to do the PDF file. All right, leave it. So box plot is not working. Some kinds of errors.
Raz shared some cheat codes with you guys. Do you have it with you? If you don't have, let's, let's load it from here. Okay. Yeah, it can be done. Box project white form data we use there. Data is equal to. I'll be using the right data. This df underscore of iris. Then we get unsupported. For flow testing, why? Let us resolve this issue. Orient is not a problem. It should be done. Fix size. Hmm. If I'm missing this data, might be. Oh God! This was the error that I was missing the data. All right. We write like this. What we get is the complete data frame having the sepal length is equals to like having values from here. The petal width is having values from zero point something ending at two point something. Petal length starts from one point something and ends at six point something. Okay. 6.9 basically that was the value and here it's 7.9 and so does the like lay, ranges and all it goes accordingly okay that is all completely divided into these things okay so till here you have doubts if you have you can ask and about this so we have two various kind of things like scatter plot we have bar charts we have <laughs> count plot we have point plots and all the count plots and those how it works let's see on the basis let's load the data tf titanic mm. data set so we get like a sample where we have survived column Passengers class, their sex, their age, their siblings and the spouses, parents and the children, where embarked from. And again, these are all of no use basically. Like because class is again this class, like it is a numerical value, it is like alphabetical values. Who is nothing but the sex, male and man is the same. Adult of male is true, or like this could be of like a much use, okay. Then the deck. The back town is nothing but C, C for Cherbourg and alive is no, basically that is the survive if it is zero, that means no and alone. If siblings, spouses and parents, children are zero, zero, that means alone is equal to true. All right, let's see. So all these columns, let's see how many males and how many females were there. We just plot SNS dot count plot. We want to count basically, what we want to count is their sex okay from the data da so we got that we have around 500 plus males and something around 300 plus females okay for exact information what we'll say df dot sex dot value counts so we have 577 males, 314 females. Clear? That is how count plot works. I hope that is clear.
okay next you have um, point plot is same as for the joint plot what we have done now if we have been asked like uh, how many uh, classes were there in the ship right uh, like how many passengers were there in the different classes okay so we'll say df dot p class So we have a having 491 passengers in the third class, 216 passengers in the first class, and 184 passengers in the second class. All right. So the third was leading, and then the first, and then the second. All right. Now among this 300 and uh, like among this 491 passengers in the third class, how many of them were in the like how many were there of the men and how many of there were the women like on the differentiation of their uh, sex right so we'll say sns dot account plot again of the p class and there hue semantic if you say on the basis of their sex So we do have the third class were almost having uh, 350 around 350 you can say or near around something right males and the females were around 150 or 148 145 around that okay we can have 50. for getting an exact value what you have to do is mm, P class integers, I hope. Right. Okay. Three forty-seven. All right. So we have three hundred and forty-seven uh, males. Same if you want to have females. There are various ways to find it. Right? Okay. You can make it accordingly. For exact values, what we can have is just like, like if let's have the second values also. One forty-seven. If we say df dot equal equals to three. So we have all these values. Is in true and false in series, okay. And you can count the true and the false, and you can write df okay. Final, we can take a test to count the men. 
347. All right. Methods are can be various. You can go with any ones. All right. So I hope things are clear. Like the C bonds also it would be clear to you how you can make things. All right. The heat maps you have been cleared. How heat map works. Okay. Heat map we have discussed that uh, flows like true boolean values 1 0 and all okay like that you can have it accordingly or like you can have various heat maps like with the uh, we'll be working in the machine learnings with the heat maps in the section called as what is that in the regression what do you have uh, what is that term called as Leave it. So a uh, heat map is something like uh, we'll just have one heat map. If I load a heat map of this, like let's say flights from the flights data. Okay. So from the flights data, I'll load this and let's run this so one function is none it's giving their data okay. okay this is done dff dot sample and we are having all right so year month and the passengers so if we have the complete data set we have 144 rows nice and we are having like in the following years we have having the following months there were these much passengers were traveling okay like that We can have it like this. It is nice. Twenty three columns have it there. Okay. So if we want to see a heat map of this, like the number of passengers traveling with a uh, color mapping and all, we'll say SNS dot heat map of this DFF. Okay. And I'll be using a color map. Let's say if I say cool warm. Again, something is a problem there. One second. One function not supported for the input types and input could not be safely caused to any support. Just a second. If I make a pivot table of this, Pivot is also same like what you see in the passengers. Hmm. So it is like same what you see here exactly like this, but you have to make it there. So if you look onto the flights, it looks like something like this. Okay. The values 112 and all what you see there in kind of these format. Okay. Years are has been there like an unique one. And you have the values basically. The total passengers in the 1941, sorry, 1949 in the 1112. See there, 1949, January month, 112. Okay, 50, 55, and all like things. Okay, so uh, let's have this. Mm. If I say these are the values, 
and if I see the heat map of flights so we have this data right where we can see like in the January month we are ha having a very dark area where we can say more than or less than 200 people traveled right the lightest area we are having here we can say where more than 600 people traveled right understood you can see with this a different color using color maps Uh, let's say we use the different color map, like cool, warm, we were using at that time. Let's run this, and yeah. So this time the darkest color will be the like values. The same values will be always the same, right? If we want to make numberings here, like to see the exact values, they will have to write the A0 value, okay? So we'll say it as like, a, let's copy it. like the values what you want to write there okay formatting value is equals to in the format of integer okay the formatting is in the integer format we are using okay so annoting each cell with the numeric data and let's run this let's see uh, the values will be there yeah so you can see like just exactly the table what you have made there distributing in the term of the heat map. All right. So I think things are clear to you. Okay. Now in between all these values, if you want to make spaces, you can make the line widths like this. Let's say point two. So we'll have like spaces also. See like this, this point to spaces uh, we don't have any spaces kind of things okay so a lot of things can be done all right you can create uh, like values with random data also understand with the random data you understand what i'm talking about like if i say random what is that np dot random dot Random. What is that? Any any random value? Now, if we want to make a heat map with this, so we'll say like, let's say this is our data, rd random data, which is equals to this. Or let's say let's say rd is equals to this. Okay. Now we say sns dot heat map of this rd. Let's run this. And must pass to the input, all right, obviously. So let's make a random data of 10 by 10. So we have something a graph like this, okay? So basically, all the colors denote all the values. Now, if you want here, you can say not equals to true, and fmt equals to person d. You'll be getting the values. What is a uh, unknown format? Code B for object type of flow. All right. Float values are there. Let's do one thing. That's better. All right, so you can see the values there. If I make it a big one, so there are the values respectively written over there, okay. And this is the random data what we have made.
okay and if you want all the values in the center we can make it as like center is equals to zero maybe this time it works yeah so not exactly but still it's fine all right so these are the things how you make it there a lot of graphs are there and so you were asking about this someone was asking about the cheat codes are you asking about this mm -hmm. 